ever been neglected before, it sucks, right? You text someone and they just ignore you even though you know they read the text. You think they're your friends and all, but they're not. But, they're not. but anyways, in 2023, I believe Blazor has been getting neglected. But why? What is going on? And what does that mean for the future of Blazor as a whole? What is it that I mean when I say neglect? I mean that the attention is not being given to Blazor as a framework from its parent corporation, Microsoft. Caveat here, the developers are not at fault. The ones who actually actively work to give Blazor its new features and optimize it more and more to make it better for us to use, they have no fault in this whatsoever. That includes Daniel Roth, that includes Steven, for his name, sorry. But these people have no fault in this and have actually, we have Blazor 8 Preview 5 that came out in June. We're gonna look at that, but not in this video. However, there are some things that we can discuss before we get into some of the Microsoft antics, which is, Blazor's 2023 performance. The performance of Blazor has actually been fairly positive compared to other frameworks this year. So let's look at it right now. Blazor has seen a positive growth between 2022 and 2023. Isn't that incredible? We had a 10% growth between those two years. So that's pretty good. But all the other web frameworks have also seen positive growth as well. So that is actually overall good for our industry. We have, you know, more people going into it. We have more developers in there. So, you know, it means there's a fair amount of interest in there. You want to have positive growth. It's a good thing. Now, the other thing, the other stat that I believe is probably more important than this one is the new programmers, those learning to code stat. So this stat says, uh, you know, people who are newer to coding and what frameworks they've chosen in order to start with that learning process. And crazy enough, Blazor is actually 20, has seen 20% uh, growth and interest between last year and this year and other frameworks like angular and react or at least angular specifically has seen negative growth which is actually kind of crazy if you think about it traditionally microsoft has been a very obtuse language and obtuse framework to get into unless you're kind of forced into it through you know because you need to step your foot in the door and then that is the product you're stuck on and then you learn the dot nets to come hell or high water so you know you swim with the sharks in the beginning but in this case blazer seems to be a fairly easy ramp into C Sharp, Microsoft.NET stack, and everything that goes along with it. So that's really nice to see. The traditionally speaking, JavaScript has been easier to use. The scripting languages are always easier than the object-oriented programming languages, but Blazor's breaking them all on that. And that is very good for the future because that means we have more people that can prescribe Blazor as a language for projects and stuff. And that ultimately leads to more jobs and more market share for us Blazor developers. And, you know, we're not going to see that with Razor anytime soon. You know, Razor is kind of a kind of a pain in the ass. But you know what else is a pain in the ass? Angular. The shitty debugging, the unnecessarily complex ways of doing RxJS. The fact that every time that it updates, when you go from Angular 14 to Angular 15, it breaks my material design and I have to go back and try to fix it because it's a piece of garbage and I hate it. So that is why I stick with Blazor. And even though I make negative videos on Blazor, I hate Angular more. I hate JS more, even though you still kind of need it. <sighs> I digress. I digress. Blazor being the better debugging framework compared to Angular. I'm just saying. Microsoft, despite Blazor's growth in positive growth between 2022 and 2023, in five years, we've gotten maybe 5% of the interest overall for Blazor compared to other programming languages. And Microsoft is an entity that is probably one of the richest entities known to man. So how can that be? What is happening here? Because it's being neglected. If Microsoft really wanted Blazor to be number one, it could certainly do it. Or at least it get really high up there. The very minimum up to the point these other frameworks like React and Angular are taking up the market share. But it has not. And the reason why, because Microsoft has its fingers in different pies, other more lucrative pies. One of these pies being ChatGPT. Yes, you've all heard of ChatGPT. That marketing was pretty good, isn't it? And you know what gets even better? When you invest $10 billion in it and then you get sued because you might have been scouring information allegedly, uh, information you're not supposed to have without permission, personal identifiable information, and that can go into a lawsuit at some point. That's one. The second lawsuit is a little bit bigger. 69 nice billion dollars are going into the FCC trying to either approve or deny but Microsoft buying Activision Blizzard, but it has approved it recently as I was making this video. So very good for them. And they're probably going to go through and that is $69 billion of, you know, their money and attention going to that. So I can see why they are really focusing on that deal to actually work out. 
And the other thing that they've been working on is Azure. Azure has been something they've been promoting for a very long time, ever since Amazon basically destroyed them when it comes to the cloud market share. Amazon has the lion's share of all cloud services, essentially. Cloud service, cloud use, cloud storage. So Amazon has the lion's share of it all. Microsoft is just catching up, and they have basically the second biggest cloud storage for other companies. I think YouTube maybe might be second themselves, but they're just for themselves more or less. Like, yeah. And it was Google, but that is a lot of stuff. There's a lot of money and that's a lot of attention. And that is not enough attention or money for Blazor. Unfortunately, I am happy that they're still developing it. I'm happy that it's still a dedicated uh, developers, dedicated community like us trying to promote Blazor. But that is simply not enough. If you want to get over the, the market hump, it's actually the market competition for Blazor. So I know that it's still being developed and I know that its full potential has not been reached until the full Blazor full stack UI what used to be called Blazor United actually works and it's finally proven, but it's been five years. Marketing needs to be better. There needs to be more to be done when it comes to getting the word out there, especially to other .NET developers at the very least, because I'm pretty sure that even though you out there might be .NET developers watching me, there are other .NET developers using all their technologies that where they could probably be using Blazor instead, but yet we don't, they don't really know about it too much and other corporations as well. There's no real good incentive to move into it without Microsoft giving some sort of push. I don't know how that's going to look like. Unfortunately, I have only a very limited realm of experience when it comes to these sorts of things, but they can, they have the money, they have the power. And you know, if you're watching me right now, then that means there must be some interest in there. So what does that mean for us Blaze developers? Well, despite Microsoft not giving it its full attention, we have seen Blazor growing between 2022 and 2023, which is very good for all of us. Fantastic, especially when it comes to newer developers who are actively choosing Blazor over other more established frameworks out there. So that's actually pretty crazy to see, crazy to hear, and I'm actually all for it. That means that at least the future has more Blazor developers in it, so that's a good thing. Again, Blazor is still the underdog, despite all that, but it has a fairly decent community behind it, you know, at least us. And also the developers who are actively adding new features, including the whole Blazor full stack UI, Blazor United, blah, blah, that thing. They're shepherding Blazor into a better place. So that's very, very good. And we'll talk about that in time. But until then, perhaps you don't like these kinds of videos and you want to see an actual tutorial that I have, perhaps this tutorial right here. Hmm? Maybe watch that, maybe like and subscribe. Maybe the video will focus at some point again. Maybe. I'll see you soon.